What's up, everybody? Rick Denham here. Welcome back to the shop. We are talking winter steelhead fishing once again, and this time exploring more into floats and jigs specifically. This is my favorite technique for steelhead fishing because it's near and dear to my heart. It's very easy to do, and it actually is what I caught my first steelhead on. So I'm so excited to be able to go a little bit more in depth with you on this and help you guys out because we are right now at the start of some good fishing here. It's almost Christmas time, and that typically between Christmas and January is that peak of the normal hatchery steelhead runs here in the Pacific Northwest. So it's a great time to get out, get your gear together, be ready to go, and go after chasing some of these really nice, fun fighting chrome fish. First, we gotta dive right into talking about the floats themselves. So when you start talking floats, you got to be fishing what you're comfortable with. For me, I love the clear drift floats. It's a confidence thing for me, honestly. And a basic setup rigging that I run is what you see here. A float, an inline weight, a couple bobber stops. Very simple, easy, and effective. I also have a fully rigged setup here. And I'm going to tell you this is a little trick. I keep three or four pre-tied bobber setups ready to go in my bag. This helps me in the case of any break-offs. I'm minimizing my downtime, maximizing my fishability. For these tied-up setups you see here, it's a very standard float setup rig. You have everything from the bobber stop at the head of it all the way through down to the bottom of the actual jig. Now, what I have found to be extremely effective doing so is I run a standard floating braided line, a 30 to 40 pound test. And with that braided line, I then tie to a top shot. Now, top shot can be mono, but what you see here is actually a line called bloodline and it's a floating monofilament. Once you have your float all together, you can then go through and pick out your inline weight. Now the inline weight, very simple. You have your main line tied down, threaded through the float, and then you have your inline weight tied on, and then from the inline weight goes to your, uh, excuse me, your jig. There are a lot of great stuff out there. Dave Stanko Free are these steel ones you see with the built-in swivel, and you have lead poured ones as well. A lot of options, but the best part is there's a variety to match the float sizes you have, right? My favorite right here is a half ounce size, whether the clear drift or the Bomac. It gets everything balanced really well with an eighth or a sixteenth ounce jig, dependent on your water. So I put probably 12 feet of this floating mono top shot. For me, that's 15 pound test on the top shot leader. I got 30 to 40 pound test main line braided that helps with the floating once you have whatever top shot you have together it's a standard bobber setup you have a bobber stop itself and they could be those tied dacron ones like you see here they come on a little nice tube make it super simple and easy you can also get the rubber egg stops um, and then either way you get your bobber stop on the line put a bumper bead on there as well and then i like to run a size 10 or 12 corky or even a little cheater on top of the float itself it acts as a contrast key when that float fully sinks i know my rig is fishing the depth that i put it properly after the float i always put a rubber bumper bead and that's a soft bead that helps protect the knot and after that, obviously, you see there you got an inline weight, whether it's a Dave's Tangle Free or one of your leaded inline float weights. Um, it balances out to whatever your float size and jig operation you're fishing. That's typically about two to three feet a liter, and that's a nice little 16th ounce jig um, for some shallower, clearer water. But to me, that is just a basic standard rigging. Nothing too fancy, super simple, and something, a trick that I've learned, and you see here I'm kind of pointing at the different colors on the float. I like to take the float weight size and match it exactly to the inline weight that I have there. It helps for the float itself to 
I wouldn't call it overweighted, but it balances out to where a very minimal amount of resistance will cause that float to dive. So it makes it even more effective at detecting bites. Now we start diving then into jig selections. And let me tell you, you go to a sporting goods store, search online, there are thousands of steelhead jigs. So you got to figure out what's best and comfortable for you. And for me, I like running reds, the standard pinks, whites, oranges, um, eighth ounce, sixteenth ounce, quarter ounce are the typical sizes that I run for a winter steelhead. Mainly though, I like fishing eighth and sixteenth more often. I custom tie a lot of mine, but truly everywhere you have options just to get standard stuff. And you can go as complicated as threading worm tails on your rabbit fur jigs or even pulling out the old pink worms. And let me tell you, one of my favorites is throwing the pink worm because there's such a variety and it gives a reactionary strike. A lot of the time I do well on those pink worms and bigger size or brighter jigs when you have a little bit higher or dirtier water. Now you see right there, that green dispenser is called a bait button. Those are crucial to having in your box because if for a worm fisherman, there are little rubber discs that helps keep that worm from sliding down. Now, a little neat trick too, those bait buttons are phenomenal at helping keep a little tipped piece of shrimp or something else on your jigs. Either way, it's just a great way to add a little bit extra security to your jigs and know that they're always going to be there. And let me tell you guys, if you want to see a little bit more about rigging shrimp up on your jigs for winter steelhead, check out this last video. Fish on!